Hi there, I'm John Weber and welcome to episode four of Yocto Project Customization 101. These episodes provide a brief set of tutorials, very high level, not too deep, showing you how to set up a project so that you can leverage the capabilities of the Yocto project while using your custom hardware and do that in a very manageable way. In the previous episodes, we started by building a metadata layer and then we added custom Yubu recipes and custom kernel recipes to it. Each episode in this series builds on the one before it. So if you've missed some of the previous episodes, you might wanna go back and review them. In this episode, we'll take the next step in building custom images. One of the advantages of the approach that Open Embedded takes here is that you can build from the ground up, adding just the application files and packages that you need while preventing the intrusion of extraneous stuff that is unnecessary for your application. For example, if you have a headless application, who needs to have graphics libraries and display controllers enabled, which can take up space and consume extra power? Creating images involves a couple of new concepts, image recipes and package groups. So what are image recipes? Basically image recipes are just like other recipes. You can start with a base set of ingredients and then you add to the recipe the customization that you need. In image recipes, you can add individual packages or you can add groups of packages, which are called package groups. We don't have a ton of time to write image recipes and package groups here. So what I'm going to do is to show you how to build them and their structure. And I've also pushed all the content for the Metascorpion layer, which is what we've been building over the course of these tutorials, into our GitHub, and I'll post the link to that in this episode notes so that you can browse the entire metadata layer yourself. Image recipes can be anywhere, but are normally in a subdirectory named images, and the image recipe logically has the word image in it. So as an example, core image base, or core image minimal, or IMAX image core, and so on. We'll put this in a directory named recipes-scorpion in our metadata layer, which has the scorpion project specific recipes in it. In that, I created two image recipes, one for development and one for production, which will not include all the test programs and application debug functionality that we don't want in production. In addition, I created three package groups that are used in these image recipes. One package group contains utilities that might be useful, such as some file system and partitioning programs, Another group is one that contains a bunch of test applications like iperf and glmark. And finally, the last one is a package group containing a bunch of Python 3 functionality. I recently had a customer ask me how to bring in Python package installer or pip, and I figured I would just answer that question on this video. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the recipe contents for our image recipes. First, I'll bring up the test recipe here. So that is, as I mentioned before, found under recipes-scorpion, which I created under a subdirectory named images. And so this is the Scorpion image test recipe. And you can see at the very top, it has some basic comments here regarding copyright and the license. And then here, very important for every Yocta recipe is to have a description line here, which really just describes what the image recipe has in it. Um, and then also the license here referral, also very important for nearly everything that you do in Yocta or open embedded. The next line that you'll see here is inherent core image. And what this does is it brings in all the functionality of the core image class. And uh, classes are a little bit too deep to go into in this tutorial, but basically everything that goes into say core image base is what is inherited when we put inherent core dash image into this recipe. The next line here is the image features line. In this line, we can add features of core image, of the core image class that contain a lot of uh, related functionality. So for example, um, debug tweaks, uh, provide some tweaks to the distro to do things like prevent you from needing to enter in a root password, uh, that kind of thing. The next thing is the profiling tools. So these are profiling tools like LTTNG, Valgrind, etc. Tools debug would include GDB, GDB server, for example. SSH server drop bear brings in the drop bear uh, SSH server. Open SSH is also an option here. And then the last line here is the splash screen. So that is the splash screen feature, which we'll go into in a little bit later, but this is the basic open embedded splash screen called P-Splash. Finally, in the next line here, you'll see core image extra install. And in this line, you can add in a lot of specific packages. Um, in this case, we're talking about package groups. I don't add in specific packages, 
but uh, I include here package groups. This is a very useful feature of Open Embedded uh, because what you can do is you can take a single package group recipe and you can group a lot of related functionality, the packages that have a lot of related functionality for your application or for your target into specific groups. Um, so for example, package group core full command line is a bunch of command line utilities. Package group core build essential contains tool chain, so GCC and LD, et cetera. And then the next three package groups are the Scorpion package groups. So these are the ones that I've created. This one contains a bunch of test applications like GLMark, for example, iPerf for testing network speed and things like that. The next group here is package group Scorpion utilities. And in that I add a few things like part D for doing partitioning, uh, resize 2FS for doing image or, or sort of file, file system resizing. Also put VI improved or, or Vim because personally I hate using VI, uh, the busy box version of VI uh, when I'm working with, uh, with files. And then finally, uh, because I had a customer ask me about it, uh, I add, I created uh, a set uh, or a package group that brings in a number of Python 3 packages um, and then also includes uh, the pip, PI, the Python uh, installer uh, in here as well. So that is the test image. One of the other things that is nice about uh, Open Embedded is that you can create different kinds of images. In this case, um, I'm gonna have the test image and then I'm just gonna show you the production image. This production image has the same exact structure, except in the production image, I get rid of a lot of the debugging and test tools. So I got rid of the debug tweaks feature. So you don't see that here. I got rid of the tools profile feature and the tools debug feature. And I just keep in an SSH server and a splash screen feature. And finally, in the core image install, instead of adding all five package groups that I have here, I remove the test apps package group. So that is not in here. And overall that will result in a smaller image that doesn't have as much stuff in it that you don't need or don't want in production. So next thing, let's go ahead and dive into the package group. So I'm gonna go ahead and close both of these up and let's show you what a package group is. So first thing, let's open up the simplest one. So this is package group Scorpion utilities. And this is the one that I mentioned earlier, just contains a few little utilities that I think are useful. And again, it has the same structure, has the description line, has the summary line, and then uh, has here a line says, uh, inherit package group. So that inherits the capabilities and functionality of the package group class. Very important when creating package group recipes. And then you have a line here called R depends underscore dollar PN. So what this R depends line does is it in this list of packages become runtime dependencies of this package group. So when you create, when you bring in package group Scorpion utilities. So for example, if I bring up the uh, scorpion image.bb recipe here. Uh, what will happen is, is that by bringing in this package group into core image extra install, you will effectively be adding a bunch of runtime dependencies um, to this particular line. So that will bring in all of these different packages. So let's go ahead and look at the test apps. So just to show you the test apps, keep things organized here. Um, same structure, the test applications include also utilities, uh, a bunch of I2C tools, for example, um, mem tester, GL mark, et cetera, ETH tool, um, memory technology device utils. And then finally, I'll show you the Python 3 package. So same thing here, except that this brings in uh, Python 3 modules, which is a bunch of uh, default uh, modules for Python 3. Python 3 dev, which brings in the development headers for Python 3, and also Python 3 pip. Um, this is the Python package installer. This is a convenient thing to be using in development. However, I wanna just caveat that a little bit and say that doing post-install runtime installation steps is generally not the right flow to use when you're working with Yocto and Open Embedded. The whole way that Yocto and Open Embedded is supposed to work is you define 
all the packages that you want into an image, all the files, everything is done with recipes and image files, image recipes, etc. And then uh, once you've bit baked an image, that becomes the image that you run on the system. There's no post install steps there that are done, um, for example, with Python installing something over a network. So uh, in general, that's a much better way of doing it. However, in development, it's, it's a fine thing to do in development. You do want to specify them all in an image recipe so that everything is deterministic and manageable. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to point out to you uh, is that I created a modified version of the Yocto splash screen, which is a utility called PSplash. Um, in this, all I did was I added our, our Scorpion splash screen, but instead of seeing the sort of the Yocto, default Yocto project uh, splash come up, um, you'll see this splash screen come up with a nice little color bar image and all of that. Um, so if you want to go through and play with that, you certainly can. I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. I think the next step here is to run a couple of these images here and show you uh, what has been done. Okay, so let's show you that we have indeed added a couple of interesting utilities to this image. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot the board here. I'm gonna show you my updated splash screen. So you can see that's the normal U-boot splash, and then we'll see the kernel splash screen here in a second. That's the kernel splash screen, and then we'll see the Yocto splash fly by too. See the little progress bar? So that's already been integrated. And we're going to go ahead, and I'm just gonna go which VI. All right, slash slash bin slash VI. Now if I go VI dash H, this is Vim. Uh, so this is not VI that comes with BusyBox, um, much more functional uh, package. Now, if I want to go through and install uh, something with pip3, so pip3 install, let's try PySerial, for example. So I went ahead and installed the PySerial package. So you can see we have pip3 and vim working, no problem there. And now if I wanted to look at iperf, for example, iperf3, and I wanted to check and just uh, for grins, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire up an iperf window, iperf 3-s, that's the server. So my IP address is 182.168.0.184. And if I wanted to check my connection here, dash C 182.168, at zero dot one eighty four. So I am connected. That is obviously hardwired network bandwidth uh, between the Pico IMX 8M Mini um, and my local laptop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and with that, we're gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, so here what I did is I showed you how to create image recipes and create package groups. Um, with this, the next episode, we're gonna talk a bit about how to get rid of things that you don't need in Yocto and also potentially how to make the system overall move faster. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm John Weber, thanks for watching.